Hey, it's Dougie from Valto, and in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can create your very own Viva Engage community. But first, it's worth explaining what is a Viva Engage community and why would you actually need one. Now, there's actually two different types of Viva Engage community. We have what we refer to as official, which is where we can see this like little tick next to the name of the community like so. And we have unofficial communities, which is like this golf team, which doesn't have a tick next to it, or finance, which doesn't have a tick next to it. Now, the difference between an unofficial and an official community essentially is that you can give a badge to a community to say that it's an official community. So that, say, for example, if I was to see some information inside of that community, um, I can almost take it as that is factual. It's almost trying to cut down on that kind of fake news element the official community tick is only given to those which are managed by the organization. So typically, as I say, all company uh, type of community would be managed by the overarching organization. So any information in there would be deemed to be um, factual. Uh, now, a community is just a gathering of people and they can share ideas, thoughts, questions, comments, polls, images, videos, uh, and so forth, and even documents as well. Now, let's take a little look at community. I'm just going to jump into this golf team just to show you the types of things which are available inside of a community. So communities will open up by default on the conversations tab. And this is essentially where we can post things like discussions to share our thoughts, ideas, or updates, uh, any questions that we might have. Now, the cool thing about posting questions inside of a community is it's a little bit like Reddit. So if I just scroll down and just try and find an example for you, here, this is just obviously a test uh, community, but we've put where's the best place that obviously should say golf, not gold. Um, but you can see here, then you can post answers underneath it. And just like in Reddit, where you can have upvotes, it means that you can post um, a question. People can then give answers. You can mark which is the best answer to pin it to the very top, or people can upvote it and downvote and things like that. So you can actually see um, from the community what they feel the best answer is. Now, this makes it much easier in the future when it comes to other people wanting to ask questions or find answers. Of course, there's other types of uh, conversations. We can have praise. So this is where we're giving praise to one of our colleagues. So maybe they've helped us with something and we want to give them some public recognition. We can use that praise feature. We have poll, which is where there's maybe a question or a sur uh, survey. So something like this, where shall we play golf next? And then we've got a couple of different options there. And then people can vote on that. And then we've got article, which is a bit like a, it's a wiki page uh, article, a little snippet of knowledge which we're sharing with the community. We can see across the top right corner the members of that community, so how many members we've got. We can see a rough summary of people uh, that these posts have reached and who has actually been engaged. Um, and then further down, we can get other community resources. So as I say, we can store things like documents, which integrates nicely into SharePoint. Um, we have SharePoint sites, we have OneNote, uh, and we also have Planner as well. So if this community needed to have some level of uh, collaboration or organizing of something, um, then we have those additional materials uh, and resources that we can use by default as part of our community. We can see all the communities that we favorited on the left-hand side here, and that's just where we have actually clicked uh, that this particular community is a favorite and we want to easily get access to it. But we can also see all our other communities on the left-hand side. If I click on Discover Communities, we can see all the other communities um, that we are either a part of or it's being suggested to us. So I can see my communities are listed here, and I can click on View More to see all of them. I can see official communities. So I say these are communities from the organization which are um, basically factual. All the information in there is update and managed by the organization. And then we've got recommended communities. So these are communities that I can join. They are open, they are public, um, but I've yet to join them yet. So um, it's determined that a few of my colleagues are in the finance community and I might be interested in joining that particular community. But now let's look at actually creating a community. Now, I should mention first that you do need a higher level of um access of administration role to be able to create a community. Now, you should be able to see a create community uh, button across the bottom right hand corner of the communities tab inside of Viva Engage, if you have the option uh, to be able to create a community. 
Now, the role that you're going to need to create communities is referred to as Yammer Administrator. Now, this does get a little bit confusing because Yammer was the previous name of Viva Engage. So Yammer, you may have heard of before, um, it's exactly the same as Viva Engage. It's just Viva Engage is the new name for that product. So hopefully in time, this administration role will change, but you will need this y uh, Yammer administrator role um, activated in order to be able to create Viva Engage communities. Now, we actually use a product inside of Azure that's called uh, Privileged Identity Management, which basically means that we can give um, administrator rights to different people for very short periods of time. So when it comes to creating communities, um, we're not going to be doing this all the time. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to um, allow control um, to only certain people, and they can come in, in here and request access. It can be automatically activated, and then it logs into uh, a, a sort of history log of who has had that administrator role. And I should mention as well, this has got nothing to do with Viva Engage. This is purely an Azure product, which we help our customers deploy for all sorts of administration tools. Um, and you can have different admin roles in here for not just Viva Engage, but SharePoint, um, Exchange, and so many other Microsoft 365 products. So if you are interested in that as a product, as something separate, you can contact us and we can talk to you about how we can get that deployed for you as well. So just jumping back into Viva Engage then, you can see here just over my shoulder, this is where the create a community button uh, will live. Once you click on that button, you'll then get this pop out, which will ask you to give your community a name. So whatever it is that you're going to be calling this. Um, so we might call this our five, five aside football, which is a sort of common thing you would expect to see as a community inside of Viva Engage. Communities are not just for uh, projects and collaboration, but they're also for a lot of social kind of initiatives. Um, so the description might be um, a community for the Falto football team to discuss when they play. So obviously that's not a great description. You can you can give that a better one. That was just something off the top of my head. We can then add members. So we can easily add members into this by just selecting on them here um, and typing in some names like so. <clears throat> then under settings, we've got um, an edit button, which puts a drop down here that we can choose from two options. These two options are either public or private. So public means anyone in your network can view and join this community. Now, typically for most social related uh, communities, that would be the default is that you would select public. You can also have private, which means only approved community members can view or participate. So that means you have to be invited or let into the community before you can see it. Now that's better, say for example, if there was uh, something like a event that was being organized or something like that. Maybe you don't necessarily want every single person coming in there and dropping in their ideas and things like that. Maybe it's like a Christmas party and there's a handful of different uh, people from around the organization which are helping organize it or a fundraiser or something like that. Um, again, it's all about kind of collaborating as that social element, but uh, we also want to sort of limit who uh, can come and go from the community. That's when we would choose the private option. In this case, I'm going to include public. We can then select the default publisher, which is by default, will it be a discussion? So is someone posting something that's like a thought um, or an idea? Or is it a question? Meaning that by default, everything that is posted in there will be a question to the community. Now in this case, because it's five-side football, I think most of the people in there are going to be posting in their pictures of the um, when they're playing, um, posting when the next update of when the next football game will take place, and so forth. Um, we can also choose or allow all network users to move conversations into the community, which allows admins are always able to move conversations. So we can either choose that to be on or off. Then we click on create, and this is now going to create our community for us. Now we've got a community now created. Um, it, it's set up, uh, everything up for us. So we can now start posting in there if we wanted to, but you probably want to uh, change a couple of additional things. We have the option here of uploading a picture. So again, by clicking that and then selecting an image, we can then upload an image to set our banner. Um, so there we go. So now we've got a nice picture of our Valto five-a-side football team. 
Uh, we've got our display picture of the football um, and we're almost ready to go. So the final things that we might want to do is we might want to add a couple more uh, members so we could choose to add some more people in here if we wanted to. Um, we can even import from a CSV as well. So if you've got a list of people's names, you can import directly from here. Or we could just tell people that this is now available. They can search from it inside of Viva Engage and they can choose to join that community if they wanted to. If you need any help with Viva Engage, we do offer professional services. This starts with a free one hour consultation with one of our Viva engagement specialists. So you can book your free consultation using the link in the description below. Click on that, takes you through to a contact form, put in your details and reach out to us today. Of course, if you like this video, please do drop us a comment below, subscribe to our channel for more Viva content and give that video a thumbs up like. Thank you.